Hey there friends, I'm a bit late in getting this video up to, I'm sure, the surprise of absolutely nobody, uh, given that that is my tendency. I ran into some issues while constructing this. I went ahead and made this up in Fusion 360 on my Windows PC, and the solver for simulations on Windows just refused to actually work. So I loaded up OBS on my Mac, and I went ahead and rebuilt the entire thing from scratch, starting you know, from just the base measurements of the room up to what you see here. And I hadn't realized that OBS doesn't do automatic screen fitting. So all of the footage that I shot of that, of the actual construction and explaining why I chose the things I did and all of that, looks like this. Where it's just the top corner, which isn't actually useful at all. And I really don't have the patience to build this entire thing from scratch a third time just to do another video. So I just want to show you what I have, basically. Uh, this tank is designed basically to just fit in an entire side of the building. It is 50 linear feet from this edge up around the corner back to this side over here. Well, just under. It's 49 and a third feet. Uh, it's kind of a weird measurement, but the door is right here, so it's a little odd. The actual dimensions of this, the, the capacity, is quite a bit smaller than I had originally thought. I was thinking originally about 5,000 gallons, but it's important to be able to actually walk around behind it. So what I did here was where the actual walls are, everywhere behind the tank is going to have an 18-inch gap, and that will give access to me as well as a really good barrier for allowing airflow to go through so that I'm not going to run into an issue with a frozen column freezing out the tank in the future. I can just set up some fans here that'll circulate the air if it gets too cold outside and that should help solve a lot of the problems. I also have 4x4s elevating the entire tank off of the ground. Now, you don't actually need a whole lot of support on the bottom of a tank like this because in any given square inch, you're looking at a couple pounds of actual water pressure. So the overall weight here is tremendous, but the weight in the center section is not actually a huge deal. Uh, I wasn't able to easily simulate the actual boards themselves, but anywhere where, say, the uh, plywood ends, I will have another cross brace going this way that will butt against the joints so that there's not unsupported areas where it can bow. But there's no reason to actually do that for the simulation because you're just assuming that it's solid wood for this. The sides over here are notched out so that I can stick in a couple larger tanks that are just going to have uh, insulated rollers so that I can push them in and out. The tank over here is 48 inches tall, which is the same as the current one. And the windows are a bit larger, so because of the odd size, I'm alternating a bit. I'm going to do a 48-inch window, a 36-inch window, a 48-inch window. Uh, and then the windows on this side will basically be the same size as the ones that I have. They're just going to be horizontal instead of vertical. I think that it's going to be a pretty good design. It's not going to be exactly what I have here, but this is the basic idea with a few modifications as they are needed as it go through it. Uh, the actual walling here is just doubled up uh, three-quarter inch plywood. As long as you use a high-quality plywood, that'll work pretty well. It doesn't actually need any extra bracing. The difference between this tank and the tank that I did last time that had all the bracing on the inside was that one was just single plywood sheets. Uh, I did that to save cost, and it did add a whole lot of complexity to the build, so I'm not going to be doing that this time. I haven't done a whole lot of actually figuring of what the cost of this is going to end up being, but, you know, once I have that as an idea, I guess I'll make an update. Uh, I'll probably figure that out as I'm going, rather than figuring it out ahead of time, because this is something that's going to take quite a while to build. The... One thing that I got a lot of comments from on the last one was people saying, well, that won't ever last, that's going to cause problems, it's going to fall apart, I know about woodworking and all this other stuff. Uh, Fusion 360 has this simulation mode where you can go in and you can actually set up water pressure, and you can set up the materials that everything is made of, uh, 
and it tells you where in your design you're likely to have problems. So you can see here the front windows are only three and a half times stronger than they need to be. But that's not really the case because if you watch the last video on design, you can't really do plywood or other kinds of woods in this simulator because it can't handle strengths that are different in different directions. So what you end up having to do with this, if it'll let me do it, is you actually can set the material to MDF. And MDF is worse than wood in basically every way. So my attitude on this is if it passes with MDF, then plywood and solid wood are going to be perfectly fine for the actual design. So the simulation is run with MDF and acrylic windows. The larger windows are three quarter inch. Uh, the smaller windows are half inch. And that may seem small based on a lot of the calculators online, but as you can see here, it is 15 times stronger than it's actually going to need to be. So that's not going to be a huge issue. The deformation here is grossly exaggerated just to actually show you like where the pressure points and things are. Uh, again, you know, these sections here are only three and a half times, according to this, as strong as they need to be. So when I actually do this, I'll probably put some wood for support on the insides of these just to be on the safe side. But even without it, it's fine. The tool has an actual deformation thing where you can go in and you can see the windows are going to have a little bit of lensing to them. There's a little bit of a bulge here, but it's not super bad. Like, it's not enough that it actually comes out of the frame. And the actual deformation for the frame itself, while you can see it, again, isn't actually enough to make a difference. It's just showing that there is something there. So... Again, I'm going to have some 4x4s or 2x4s where the seams are, just to make sure that there's solid wood. And that will, in doing that, also add the support to this to stop any sort of deformation, but it's really not necessary. Uh, yeah, so going through with this, um, I don't know, maybe I'll do a build video and throw it up on Patreon if there's any sort of interest for that, but... I've already done a long video about builds for this, so I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, I'll be answering questions about why I chose the design that I chose as I actually build it. Uh, the side over here, I'm doing the way that it is because I want to be able to get into it. So this is 40 inches wide and 26 inches deep, which is going to make it accessing it from either side pretty easy. Uh, there's going to be a spot right in here in the middle that's going to be really hard to reach by hand, but other than that, this section should be really easy to redecorate, change things out, plant things, and this deeper section is going to be larger fish. So it's going to be the Paku, it's going to be large South American cichlids like, uh, you know, the Oscar and things like that that I have. Uh, I may end up getting a jaguar cichlid for this tank and throwing in my jack dempseys and things like that uh i don't know i haven't really thought about that a whole lot because i'm not sure how long it'll take the paku to get big enough that they're going to try to eat them i know online it says that large paku are vegetarian but i've seen a lot of footage of people catching them using meat so i know they do eat meat when it's available and freaking budgies won't stop the way I'm going to deal with the uh, separation of the large fish and the small fish is in this section here, I'm just going to put in some separator screen, just some large plastic screen that will allow water through pretty easily, but is small enough that it'll stop tetras and cardinal or platys and things from getting back and forth. Um, overall, I think it's going to be a pretty fun project. It's probably going to take me a really long time, but I guess the positive side of all of my fish dying is I don't have to feel like I have to rush to get something done. I can do it right and I can do it the way that I want and not worry about it. Anyways, that's uh, that's what's going to be expected. So we'll start on that and we'll see how it goes. We'll see you guys in the next one.